2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the Council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country, the Garden people of the Adelaide Plains. It pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they have continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. And we also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. All present remain standing in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air. Members, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Members, ladies and gentlemen, can I welcome you to the meeting of the City of Adelaide Council Chamber on Tuesday the 27th of March 2018. Members, item five on your agendas, which is apologies and leave of absence. Our only apology is Councillor Antic, who I understand is unwell. So I will take you on to item six, which is confirmation of minutes from the previous meeting of the City of Adelaide Council Chamber, which was held on the 13th of March 2018. Members, can I have a mover, please, for the adoption of those minutes? Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Wilkinson. Any queries, members, in regards to those minutes? I'll put it before you to adopt. Those in favour? Those against? Members, thank you. We've carried the minutes from the meeting of the 13th of March 2018. Members, item seven, we have three deputations this evening and three public forum deputations this evening. The first is regarding item 12.9 on your agendas which is from Mr Rod Stoller, which is a deputation regarding the proposed ice rink event for Victoria Square. Mr Stoller, can I invite you please to join us and uh, the elected members will afford you a five minute period and we welcome you to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, thank you, councillors, for the opportunity to, uh, to discuss our proposal to run a winter festival uh, which we would call Skating at Victoria Square. Um, we currently run winter festivals in all the other capital cities, state capital cities, um, at iconic locations such as uh, King, King William Square, Federation Square, Elizabeth Quay, um, St Mary's Cathedral Square, um, and in the civic area of Canberra. And we're hoping that uh, as a result of tonight's deliberations that we will be successful in being able to add Victoria Square to it. Our promotional uh, line is that you can do it in um, Times Square, you can do it in Hyde Park, and now you can do it in Victoria Square, Adelaide. Um, 
we've been, as a company, renowned for, uh, for the development of unique winter events and successfully delivered events, as I said, across Australia for the last four, four years. Um, this event would fulfil two of the street's strategic priorities for the Council, and that is to activate the city in winter, and also it would attract an interstate event organiser delivering a range of economic and tourism uh, objectives in line with the City of Adelaide's strategic plan. Uh, now, we are a Victorian-based company, and um, but one of our primary objectives is to work with the communities in which we deliver events. With that in mind, uh, we would only be bringing over specialist ice rink um, employees to actually run the ice facility, and that would be no more than two people. Uh, we would then be engaging all our staff locally here in Adelaide. We're already having discussions with a, a local event management company who would um, help us deliver all the, um, the operational elements. And um, likewise, we would use all local suppliers for the delivery of infrastructure that would be required for the event. We're also very conscious that, um, that you know, tourism is an important aspect and uh, that if we can uh, contribute to inter interstate bed stays, that would be a, a great advantage for the City of Adelaide. So one of our policies is to engage with local hotels and to develop um, packages of stay and skate but so that uh, hopefully we can attract people from both interstate and uh, from country areas. Uh, we also want to work very closely with all the stakeholders uh, in the community, um, and uh, they, those being uh, restaurants and bars, and we'd, be, we'd look to invite them to participate in the event, potentially, or to have special offers where uh, where our patrons may present their, uh, their skate ticket and they might receive a benefit, uh, be it a cup of coffee or a free entree. Um, that's going to add benefits to stakeholders right across the city from the people we attract into, uh, into Adelaide and Victoria Square. Also being in the school holidays, that's going to bring a lot of families into the, uh, into the city centre, which again will, uh, will give that follow-on effect, effect to business. And we're expecting to have in the vicinity of 20,000 people ice skate over the three weeks <coughs> excuse me, of the event, which would equate to about 100,000 visitors coming into, uh, uh, into the city based on our experience in other cities. And this is a free event in the sense that um, the site is open to the public. Anybody can come and enjoy it. They can bring a picnic lunch. They can enjoy the atmosphere, watch the ice ice skating. Obviously, there are costs to participate um, in the in the event itself. Uh, and and uh, further to try and attract people to both uh, to come back, we're going to be offering 50% discount for a uh, a return skate visit for anybody who wants to rebook. Uh, we're very conscious of the fact that um, Victoria Square is one of the premium sites of Adelaide, and uh, and as such, any impact on the uh, on the parkland would need to be kept to a to a, to a minimum, uh, as is any access on uh, the general public on a day to day basis who would walk through. As such, we've developed a site plan where the two main uh, pedestrian pathways through the centre of the park would be kept completely clear. Um, so at no stage is there, uh, there any obstruction to people who would normally uh, use the park or travel through the park. Um, with any event, there's going to be impact on the, uh, on the grass and um, the rest of the, the um, square, but we're very conscious of uh, minimising this and we're going to be working very closely with Council, should we be successful, to minimise that risk. Um, we've also budgeted for a full restoration within our, um, our figures. So that should uh, be significant damage, then uh, we certainly will have the funds available, and we'll make we'll make sure that uh, we return the park to the pristine condition that it should be, as one of the, uh, the premium sites here in Adelaide. We're also very conscious of minimising our impact on the environment. Uh, Recycling is a priority, and um, we use in energy efficient cooling systems. We use biofuel for generators. And we have a sealed system uh, for the ice rinks, which is exclusively developed by us, and that ensures 100% recovery of all refrigerant used. Um, we're also very conscious of the visual amenity of the square. I'll need you to wind up relatively soon. I will, I will, sir. I need the comfort from the floor of the council chamber for that to happen. Members, do I have it? Yes. I'll give you a couple more minutes. Mr. Thank Stoller. you very much. Thank you.
Um, so the visual amenity of the event, and uh, we, again, we'll work closely with council to ensure that the site is always presentable, looks good, and is, a, uh, is something which the city would be proud to have um, as an event site. Um, we'd also like to make this a regular event on the Adelaide calendar, and uh, this, although the application is for one year, we do have a medium and long-term plan with um, some, uh, some ideas to build attractions within the event to expand it. Um, I'd also just like to very quickly say, if I may, uh, we've delivered events in all the major cities around the country. This is the first time we'll be coming to Adelaide. Uh, and I think the process that, uh, that you go through uh, that uh, sees me here tonight is uh, really excellent. It's very fair to the promoters. Um, it ensures all the stakeholders in the vicinity uh, are aware of what's going on, have the right to object, and it also helps us in knowing what the priorities for the council are. Um, so I'd, I'd like to compliment council on that process. Um, I'd also like to compliment the, uh, the staff that we've been working with, who uh, they're dedicated, they're knowledgeable, and they're, they've been diligent in, in following this process. So finally, um, we look forward, hopefully, to, uh, to a successful um, application and, uh, and working with council to, uh, to de deliver a safe and successful event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Stoller. Thank you for your deputation to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber. Appreciate it. Members, with regards to that matter, which is item 12.9 on your papers, I may bring that forward. So when we get to section 9, 12 on your papers, of which there are many subsections, I might deal with that matter first. Now, members, we have a uh, public forum from um, Anthony Williamson, Tony Williamson, former councillor of the City of Adelaide, regarding Hut Street. Welcome, Mr. Williamson. Good evening, ladies, uh, Lord Mayor and councillors. I'd like to open with comments from Hut Street that may paint a bit of a picture here. These are comments from the, from the uh, Hut Street Centre. Fighting and abuse language extends up the street and onto the roads. Somebody is going to get killed. I cannot control the increase in petty theft. I now keep a cricket bag behind the counter. My clients have been unable to leave my shop because of a fight on the footpath. I am trying to get out of my lease and leave the street. My numbers are down 20% recently and I notice fewer people in the street. Our practice is on South Terrace. To get coffee in Hutt Street, we would avoid the city's abuse by a longer route. No longer a problem. The coffee shop is closed. We no longer dispense methadone, but as that does not stop them from coming to the shop and abusing the staff. I have too much invested in the street to move. Something has to be done to make it safer. I would have thought that assault, theft, drug taking, drug dealing, begging, for men begging with menaces and abuse are all matters best handled by the authorities. The bleeding obvious solution is for the council to be a conduit who, with the state government, may see in the wisdom of relocating the Hutt Street Centre for, to a purpose-built location. Most people in the community support assisting the vulnerable, but the support has evaporated when the safety and shoppers staff, cafe, cafe users and owners are put at risk. Recordings of fight and abuse on circuit TV have been taken until the camera was damaged by an abusive action and there has been personal abuse in the street to locals as well as visitors from interstate and overseas. I've been in the street for over 10 years. It is even now worse. Now, these are only a sample of the comments that you could get if you visited the traders in Hutt Street. It would take me more than five minutes, actually, to expand on the problems that are existing in Hutt Street. However, I have provided all councillors with documentation, which I would hope that you would read. And I understand that uh, there's no questions allowed out of this five-minute presentation, but I hope that uh, councillors may uh, approach me later on. I allude to the downturn, the downturn of the commercial activity in the street. With a loss of revenue in business, there's also a loss of uh, reinvestment. This has been compounded over the years by the closure of shops, which is a very much a negative effect. There's an increase in vacancies, which is giving a poor image to the street. There's a frequent exposure in the street to violence and abuse. This is causing trader despondency and a great concern for the future. 
And there is an anger in the street, which is worsening because of the safe, lack of safety in the street. There's a call for greater protection and security to the public as well as to the traders. We see no, they see no hope in this ever being fully resolved if the Hutt Street Centre situation is not changed. Now, <clears throat> it's necessary in addressing this situation. I know that it has been mooted and proposed that maybe a traders association could be formed. And there was an attempt two to three years ago to do this. Unfortunately, it failed because of lack of support, both from the individuals, but also because of financial and volunteer participation. This uh, formation of a traders association would form a common, common, a common vehicle for the traders to approach council on particular issues. It would be used to address the business downturn by a combined effort. It would be used to promote the street again by a combined effort. It would address, I believe, the issues of safety and security in the street. And it would also assist in approaching the difficulties that are had at the Hutt Street Centre. I beg of you that this is an urgent situation. It would take nothing to superimpose what was proposed two and a half years ago on a business a proposition where a business plan was done, a constitution was done, it would take nothing just to superimpose a traders association on top of that. Sorry, I'm not telling council what to do, I'm just suggesting. Um, just I'd like to finish with this quote from Tim Flannery, whose work on archaeology is well known. He states, the division of man thrives where there is peace and security and is imperiled where crime and civil strife reign. And I think that's quite appropriate in this situation. Thank you, councillors. Thank you, Lord Mayor, I should say, firstly, and thank you, councillors. Thank you, Mr. Williamson. Great, we appreciate it. Members, we have a deputation from Neoli Nanjokis regarding North Adelaide Parking Permit Scheme, which is item 12.3 on your agendas. Neoli, you with us this evening? Welcome and the councillors will afford you a five minute, minute period and uh, welcome to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thanks. Um, to the Mayor and Honourable Members sitting on the Council, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today on the North Adelaide Parking Permit Scheme trial. This is a very important issue for me. I want to impress upon those sitting here with voting power to please think of the residents like myself whose lives will be severely affected if the parking trial goes ahead. I am vehemently against the proposed parking trial. Almost four years ago I moved to North Adelaide in Buxton Street. The small bed city unit did not have an off street parking spot. I live in a block of 16 units and none of the residents have a private off street parking spot. We all rely on untimed parking to park our cars safely near our home. Although not having a private park is inconvenient, the availability of these parks allowed me to make the decision to move to North Adelaide. There is no way I would have moved to North Adelaide if there was no untimed parking nearby. The stress and inconvenience of having to move my car every so many hours would have stopped me. I only found out about this parking trial by accident yesterday. I remember the survey from 2016 vaguely, but as I was fine with the parking, I did not think much of it, and I do not remember this suggestion of removing untimed parking in there. To now suggest that removing untimed and 10-hour parks in, that will help parking is farcical in the extreme. I have problems now getting a park from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. as the nursing shift from the aged care facility on Buxton Street takes them up. I do not begrudge shift workers parking there as they need to be safe walking to and from work. Even if my area does not have the untimed parks removed, the flow on effect from surrounding areas will be horrific as cars will naturally gravitate to available areas. The amount of nurses from the Women's and Children's Hospital and the Aged Care Home and also the Calvary Hospital makes it impractical to remove untimed parks. I personally have to walk sometimes a block in very dark conditions uh, very late at night so I can park in an untimed park. 
The stress of worrying about getting a parking ticket is very real for me as I'm a student on a low income. If you remove untimed parks, you'll make my life worse. I'll probably have to move. Part of being a livable city in Adelaide is having a convenient, available parking that even low income people can access. The cynic in me feels that moving untimed parking to time parks will give ticket collectors a field day and it's a very uncomfortable feeling to feel like the council is setting people up to fail. Shift workers will naturally drive in if they start or finish at two in the morning. It's just unsafe and unreasonable for them to, to expect them to do otherwise. But it's not just commuters who use untimed parks. I know personally of one friend on the disability pension who lives in North Adelaide and relies on untimed parking as she has no private spot. This proposed $2,145 permit would be out of her reach and mine, as well as many other people I know in North Adelaide. Please don't assume all North Adelaide residents are well-off people for whom this amount would be a drop in the bucket. This cost is prohibitive. If you want a vibrant city, then you need a mix of people. I rely on untimed parking on my street, and if you remove untimed parking in other areas of North Adelaide, you'll put pressure on mine. Please do not let business interests rule your decision. Many commuters also shop in these businesses. Removing untimed and 10 hour parks will not encourage people to shop when the parking is so prohibitively expensive or they're terrified about getting a ticket. When I have visitors at my home, it's very stressful having them come as they have to ensure that they're in an untimed park. Um, I don't want them punished for coming to visit me. As a resident, um, I think that's unfair and I don't want them uh, like getting a ticket just because they've come to visit me in my home. As a resident, I'm entitled, just like anyone else, to have a space to park my car, no matter my income bracket. And I ask the council to respectfully vote no on this parking trial. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for your presentation to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber. Greatly appreciate it. Members, we have no further deputations or public forums, so I'll take you on to item eight, which is petitions of which we have nil. Take you to item nine, members, which is the advice from the Adelaide Parklands Authority and other committees. First of all, members, you've got advice to note from APLA from the most recent meeting held on the 22nd of March, 2018. Members, moving as printed, Councillor Moran? Yes. Thank you. Do I have a second, please? Councillor Clarehan, any questions, members? No, I'll put this before you to adopt. Those in favour? Those against? So we carry the advice of APLA on item 9.1. Members, I will take you to item 10, which is the Lord Mayor's report. And as you know, members, the City of Adelaide has just moved through February, March, which is a wonderful time in our fair city. The Adelaide Fringe has well and truly exceeded its target and sold more than 700,000 tickets this year for the Fringe Festival. The Adelaide Festival itself has sold some 356,000 tickets or attendances. Uh, and we thank our council staff, who clearly have done an enormous job and always do behind the scenes to make sure that these festivals can. Uh, uh, operate very smoothly. So, CEO, on behalf of the elected members, we thank you. The uh, Lady Mayoress and I attended a number of festival events during the opening, uh, during, the, during that time, uh, including the uh, Fringe Art Exhibition, which we had at the City Library, uh, the Adelaide Festival opening night itself, uh, and a couple of Writers Week events and a couple of shows. And I'm sure members, you've all enjoyed various shows over the last five weeks. Recently, Council successfully, successfully launched the 10 Gigabit Adelaide Network to a local, national, and international acclaim. So, Councillors, thank you again for your confidence in 10 Gigabit Adelaide. I think for those members that attended the launch event some two and a half weeks ago, you would all agree it was a very enthusiastic launch event attended by in excess of 500 people. I hosted a Lord Mayoral reception for the 2018 Adelaide Biennial of Australian Art a Lord Mayoral morning tea and celebration of International Women's Day with the Multicultural Communities Council of South Australia, and a Lord Mayoral reception co-hosted by His Excellency uh, General the Honourable Sir Peter Cosgrove 
AKMC retired to celebrate International Women's Day here in the Queen Adelaide Room in Adelaide Town Hall. Also attended a Women Rock the Square live music performance hosted by City Council and in conjunction with Music SA to celebrate International Women's Day. Hosted a regular Lord Mayor's resident forum group, attended the Council of Capital City Lord Mayor's meeting in Canberra recently, of which I will provide you with a report of that conversation in due course, members. Thank you to Deputy Lord Mayor Sandy Vershaw for hosting the Lord Mayor's Business Forum whilst I was in Canberra. Thank you, DLM. I took part in the most recent Metropolitan Local Government Group meeting at Local Government House and hosted a lunch for several Metropolitan Mayors here in the Queen Adelaide Room prior to doing so and launched the 2018 intake of Council's Community Leaders Program at the Minor Works Building at Ergo. Presided over a citizenship, citizenship ceremony here in the Council Chamber conferring 41 new Australian citizens. Always a great, great pleasure to do so, members. I hosted the 30th anniversary of the Heritage Incentive Scheme celebration on Rundle Moor, and thank you to Councillor Sandy Wilkinson for also speaking at that event in support of the preservation of Adelaide's and South Australia's built heritage. Well done, Councillor. I took part in the recent Australia-China Business Council Business Leaders Reference Group meeting here at Adelaide Town Hall. I collected rubbish members as part of the City of Adelaide's 14th Clean Up Australia Day, which was attended by approximately 40 volunteers. We collected 40 bags of rubbish weighing 50 kilograms. Attended the groundbreaking ceremony for the new community sport and recreation facility in Ellis Park, Tampa Wadley, Park 24, an important modern facility will support the increased community use of our Adelaide parklands. Lady Meredith and I attended the St. Patrick's Day Parade at the Irish Club uh, and the Community Day at Adelaide Oval. Attended the opening night of the 29th Alliance Francaise Film Festival and the, Glen the Greek Glendy Festival here in Victoria Square. Members, for those that went to the Glendy on the weekend, it was a spectacular success. I believe the numbers are up, it was terrific, the entertainment was wonderful, and I think the organisers are very ecstatic to be bringing that event into the City of Adelaide. I spoke at the University of Adelaide Business Leaders Breakfast event with guest Nobel Laureate Professor Muhammad Yunus, which saw an MOU signed for a Yunus Social Business Centre to be established in the City of Adelaide in conjunction with the University. And members, for those that have not read about Pro um, Professor Muhammad Yunus, please do. He invented the notion of microbanking and has done an, ex an extraordinary um, social entrepreneur, for want of a better word, and his achievements are quite incredible. Hosted guests, the Welcoming City Symposium had a reception here in the Adelaide Town Hall in the banqueting room, spoke about the importance of family-owned small businesses in the City of Adelaide at a 150-year celebration for Grundy's and Barlow Shoes. Now, members, this is probably the longest standing business in the City of Adelaide. It would certainly be the longest standing retail business, but this is in its seventh generation. On Saturday night, they had a private function upstairs in the banqueting room and we were very fortunate to be invited and I spoke at the event. But seven generations of one family business in the City of Adelaide is something to be commended, I must say, it's an extraordinary achievement. And there were former employees, extended family members and they had a celebration of about 120 people. I attended several Neighbour Day community events, hosted the first 2018 Lord Mayor's Parklands Ramble along the riverbank. Thank you very much, Councillor Martin, for joining me. I think we must have had 50 to 60 people. So we had a good turnout on Sunday morning. Lady Meredith was pleased to celebrate. I'm a victim of my own policy, Councillor Martin. <laughs> Members, are you going to give me an extension? Go on, Ms. Thank you, Councillor Clarehead. Members, I'm on the home stretch, that I promise. <laughs> The Lady Mayoress is pleased to celebrate International Women's Day by attending the Lord Mayoral Morning Tea for Multicultural Communities Council of South Australia, for which she was the patron for that event. Lady Mayoress is also able to support me by renewing acquaintances with visiting representatives of Centurion Properties, which is a Singaporean-based company who are developing student accommodation in the City of Adelaide. She also participated as a judge and spoke at the NAO Robot Dance-Off whatever that may be. At the City Library, a competition for primary and secondary schools along with attending the 2018 Little Athletics State Individual Championship opening ceremony at Government House. And the Lady Maris also had a meeting with former 
Lady Mayoress, Mrs Watson, to gather further research towards her project called Her Story. Members, could I please have a member move that presiding member's report to be adopted? Moved by Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. All in favour? Those against? Thank you. Members, I look to you because item 11.1 .1 is your councillors' reports. Members, would any councillor like to speak to their report before I look to a mover to move and adopt? No individual comments. So, members, you've got item 11.1. .1. Can I have a mover? Moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. I'll put that straight to the floor, members. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 11.1. .1. Thank you. So, members, what I'll do, given that we've got a multitude of items to deal with in item 12 on your agenda, is I'm going to bring item 12.9 to the fore. So if you could please turn your attention to page 138 of your papers, item 12.9, you have a recommendation. You've heard the deputation. I'm in your hands, members. Councillor Moran. Moving is printed. Moving is printed, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. Would you like to speak to the matter, Councillor Moran? Oh, just briefly, I think the, um, the uh, speaker outlined um, the plans for the event. We've had similar sort of things in the City of Adelaide that have been very popular and this does sound like a professionally run event, so I recommend the motion. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Corbell Moore. Um, just that I think it's great activation and um, the proponent is somebody that we seem to be able to rely on. They are running these sorts of events across the country um, and we need to activate the city in winter time. So it's good to have activation done this end of the city. And on a personal note, my mum's the national champion for ice skating, so I look forward to going ice skating with mum on rink. <laughs> well done, mum. Members, do I have any further debate on that item? Councillor Cleary. Um, just uh, one question of administration. Did we receive any other applications from local businesses, given that in the past we've had two applications from South Australian businesses to establish an ice skating rink? I refer that to our CEO, Councillor Clarehan, CEO. The Lord Mayor, I've been advised, no, we haven't. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to comment, it was very, very pleasing to hear of the, um, of the um, applicant's willingness to address environmental um, concerns. Thank you, Councillor. Members, no further debate. I'm going to put you back to the mover, Councillor Moran. Done, Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? So we carry 12.9 members, which will take me back to 12.1. And I will turn your attention to the welcoming people to the city, page nine. You have a recommendation to note, members, this is the result of a motion from May 2017. I'm in your hand. Deputy Lord Mayor is moving. Moving is printed, Deputy Lord Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Moran. DLM, do you wish to speak to this matter? Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I need to thank the administration. It's a very comprehensive report and it's great to see how welcoming we are to people coming to our city. You're welcome, DLM. <laughs> Councillor Moran. Uh, no, thank you. Members, I look to you. Councillor Clarion. Um, just a question, Lord Mayor. I was wondering whether I couldn't find, sorry, I couldn't find anywhere in the report um, any obvious attempts to promote our um, Aboriginal um, reconciliation room and our Ghana her cultural and heritage and was wondering um, was there any reason for that not being included in the report and especially considering our reconciliation um, stretch action plan. Thank you. Good question, Councillor Clarehan. Uh, CEO, can I refer that to you, please? Thank you for the question. Um, I think we'll come back with a bit more detail on what we do do there. There's certainly the welcome to country recognition and absolutely, absolutely. But it's some further detail. It's it's a uh, our relationship with Study Adelaide, our relationship with a range of partners here, how we can bring the the uh, Aboriginal welcome more to the forefront. And the question you've raised, we'll certainly come back with a bit more detail. 
Councillor Claire, would you like to ask another question? Yes, I'd, I'd really like it if we could cross-reference our reconciliation action plan uh, and also look at how we promote our reconciliation room as well, um, as well as welcome to country and acknowledgement um, to country. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Maybe I can encourage you to have a conversation with our Director Ian Hill to subsequent that. to this too, please. I think that would be a good idea. Members, do I have any further debate with regards to item 12.1? I'll hand you back to the Deputy Lord Mayor. Summed up, Members, I put this before you. Those in favour of 12.1. Those against, we carry item 12.1, which takes us on to item 12.2. 12.2 Economic Development Tourism Program Training Work Plan, page 15, Councillor Slama. I can move as printed, Lord Mayor. Thank you. I'll look for a seconder. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I'd like to move an amendment, Lord I need a seconder, first okay. DLM. Councillor Hender. Councillor Slama, floor is yours. Uh, <laughs> I might just uh, reserve my right, if that's okay, and listen to the amendment. You can reserve your right. Councillor Hender, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to this matter at this point in time? No, you're reserving your right. So I now go to DLM. DLM. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it's a, it's a sizeable report. Uh, I'd just like to see if I can add a fourth point, uh, being that Council requests administration conduct a workshop on the detail of the content of the plan prior to funding considerations. Okay, DLM, if you could please look to your screen to ensure that gets captured accurately and then... Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so you've got a second. Now, who had... Members, I was looking at my iPad, so I need you... I mean, good faith here. Who had their hand up to second that? Councillor Martin, you're seconding? You are? We've got an amendment we're dealing with. Okay, DLM. Uh, if I could ask whether the uh, mover would like to incorporate in that into the motion. We have the motion. No, it's already been seconded, Councillor Sam. It's a little bit procedurally messy for me to unwind it, if you don't mind. We might deal with it as a... We could deal with it fairly quickly as an amendment. Unless, Councillor Martin, you are... Are you happy for this for me to reverse this process and take this as a variation? Yeah, that's the move. DLM, you happy with that? Yes. All right, members, I am going to wind this. I'm going to go back to Councillor Slama with a varied motion for which you can now debate, should you wish now. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll, Sorry, uh, Councillor, do you agree with this variation? I agree with the variation. I take it on board. You do? I'll and move. does your second agree with this variation and the room takes comfort in this variation, I presume? Yes. Okay. Councillor Slama, back to you with a very motion. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I will um, reserve my right to the end. Okay. To your variation. You can continue to do so. Yeah. Now, members, do I have any further debate on this very motion? Um, okay. Councillor Martin had his hand up first, Councillor Clarehan, and then I'll go to Councillor Clarehan. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I speak only um, in order to inform uh, any workshop that follows. Um, it is a substantial body of work and it's very hard to judge um, what the specific proposals mean and therefore I would be looking for some guidance in regard to what it is that the actions are that are proposed in relation to the Qingdao Tourism Bureau Memorandum of Understanding, what it is that this marketing platform that we're proposing to create for retailers is all about, why we're proposing to promote retail uh, take up of Google My Business. Um, I'd like to know more about the strategic sponsorships that are identified at page 37, including Hybrid World 2018, the ongoing relationship with MasterChef. At page 51, we're committed as a council to advocate for migrant reform, but which reform is not clear. Uh, I'd like to understand more about that. And then I'm not sure about the funding proposal related to uh, the Vogue Film Fest, uh, Fashion Festival, rather, at 22, 26 and 42. So there are many things in there that I, I think all of us would benefit from if we had a bit of an explanation. That's why we have Certainly, Councillor Martin. Now, Councillor Clarehan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I just wanted to raise the issue of um, the opportunity to promote, we talk about promoting our heritage, uh, and I've lost my page, but um, I just wondered whether there was a further opportunity to um, enhance the heritage offering of the city by um, 
preparing a list of hotels, um, B&Bs and Airbnbs that are actually heritage, provide heritage accommodation. It doesn't seem to be an option, an obvious option available and I just thought that that um, may be another way of um, promoting our heritage offerings. Would you like me to take that as a comment, Councillor Perry, and that can be incorporated yes. into the workshop discussion which will Absolutely. be had should this motion pass? Thank you. Done. See you. Members, any further debates? Councillor Hender, you seconded. Do you wish to speak before I move it back to the mover? Councillor Slam, the floor is yours for the summer. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, we're happy with that um, amended motion, Lord Mayor. Um, more information, the better. Although I must say that I've spent a fair bit of time with uh, Ian and the Director Ian and Associate Director Matt on, on a lot of these issues. You'll find they've got a lot of answers there already. Um, so I appreciate your work on the report, uh, both of you and your team. I think you should take that message back to the team. There's, there's a fair bit of work there. Um, the reason for bringing the report to you, members, was to bring economic development to front of mind. The spirit of EcoDev, in my opinion, needs to be meshed into the fibre of the operational fibre of this organisation. And I felt that it, it hadn't, hadn't been there in that place. And, and I really wanted to, to, to bring that to front of mind. And I noticed the, the, the restructured, newly restructured economic, economic development team. Um, we've got a new director, so there's a good window of opportunity to get a lot of these things done early in place. It, it talks to the strategic plans, it talks to the actions, it's right on the money. And the last thing I want the, the economic development department to be, Lord Mayor, is to be a department that is full of staff that's uh, redeployed from other departments. I think that department needs to be full of the smartest people we have in this city, shining the light, moving forward, being commercial in thinking, and absolutely driving the point of sustainability, assisting businesses to grow, to grow assisting businesses to stay in this city and attract more business, businesses here. Um, I will sum up by the, the figures that um, uh, Matt shared with me and they're in the report. If you look at Perth, a city very similar in terms of population, 10.5% of their budget is spent on EcoDev. Melbourne, 12.8%. Salisbury, 3.4% more than us, 33 at the moment. So we've got work to do. I think we we've, we've, uh, uh, need to allocate the right funds in, 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 into this in, into EcoDev. Uh, congratulate you on, on that plan as to what you've done and how to do it. More than happy to spend more time in the workshop, but um, I think the, 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 the majority of the work's been done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Slama. So members, I'm gonna put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry, so item 12.2 is carried. Thank you, Councillor Slama. Members, I take you immediately on to item 12.3, page 52 of your papers. You've got a recommendation to approve, endorse and note, which is to approve the trial, endorse a fee and note a recommendation. I'm in your hands, Councillor Martin. You are moving, you are moving what? Uh, I'd like to move an alternative motion, Lord Mayor. Okay, I've been advised that alternate motion is on the screen. Is that correct, Councillor Martin? That is correct. Um, I will read uh, the alternative motion. Uh, if you read it out for the President, benefit yes. of fellow elected members, then I'll seek a seconder after you've done that. Okay. Um, uh, the first point uh, remains as printed. There is a new second uh, or an amended second point which reads, endorses an annual premium parking permit for $1,500 to be included in the City of Adelaide schedule fees and charges payable either annually or quarterly and subject to review six months after the issue of the first premium parking permit. Three, requests the administration present to council no later than July 2018, a business permit approach and eligibility criteria and Four and five are uh, as printed as three and four. Okay, members, so you've now got familiarity with what you're debating. You've got a seconder with Councillor Clarahan by the look of it. Thank you. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Uh, be before I begin, may I just uh, clarify a couple of things with the administration? A few questions? Yes, you may ask questions. Yes. Okay. Um, can the administration uh, provide an, an assurance that there will not be any change for current permit holders? 
Um, through the Lord Mayor, that's correct. No change whatever? No change to current permits. That is all cost or location? That's right. Um, and um, can I ask then who will benefit from, from the reforms if, if not the current permit holders? Um, through the through the Lord Mayor, if all of the recommendations are adopted, we believe that there's the opportunity for everyone to benefit. So every resident has the opportunity would have the opportunity to um, get a permit to park on the street where they don't have that opportunity now. Um, and for and in addition, because we will be relaxing some of the criteria for the residential parking permits, there'll be people who have previously um, been declined a parking permit that would potentially get one under the new scheme. And, and um, a point about which um, I'm concerned is whether the premium permit, which I understand is versatile and which can be uh, used by visitors, guests, tradespeople, the like, it, is it likely that they will be on sold perhaps to commuters or others? Through the Lord Mayor, we make sure that the conditions attached to the permit prevented that from occurring. Uh, that is, there would be a, a, a specific prohibition on, on selling all. That's right, so we'd make that a condition of the permit. Okay, uh, and I, I note that 50% of the unclimbed zones are being wound up, but 50% will remain. How will that be determined? So we'll deal through the Lord Mayor. We'll deal with that on a street by street basis, um, and our proposal is that we would share exact, the exact plan with elected members in a design room session in April. So we'd be looking to make sure that we're balancing um, where we're removing the unrestricted parking and where we're keeping it on a street by street basis. So, Councillor, I'm going to need you to start debating soon because that's four questions and you have had some days to ask these. So, have you got any more? Um, well, uh, I was uh, just going to ask the nature of that. So, it can be specific streets, is what you're saying? Through the Lord Mayor, that's right. Yep, okay. Okay, four is yours, Councillor Martin. Thank, Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, my, uh, my first preference uh, would be uh, to be here. Um, advocating for every ratepayer in North Adelaide to have a on-street parking permit, but um, that is not possible. I understand that, and the uh, research that was done through the local area traffic management plan shows that there are uh, 4,700 parking spaces and uh, three and a half thousand residential dwellings. So, if you gave every uh, house a uh, uh, an on-street permit, there'd be precious little left for visitors, shoppers, businesses, uh, local workers. But the proposal before us represents a compromise. It's not perfect, I accept that. Um, but because it is a first attempt at real parking reform in North Adelaide on a trial basis for one year with regular reports and capacity for council to alter it, then I think uh, that is the first step on the road to what could be a first-class system. Now, uh, the problem uh, that has been identified many times in this chamber is that the suburb of North Adelaide is being parked up by commuters. Um, the vast majority of permit holders will not be affected, but there will be a substantial change in relation to commuters. If there is a conversion to time zones, but with sufficient untimed zones remaining to assist uh, people such as our uh, uh, speaker tonight during the deputation, then there has to be more spaces available for residents, for workers, for visitors, um, and also for business owners. And most importantly, uh, what this premium permit does is uh, provide for equity. That is to say, a whole raft of people who have been prohibited from any kind of permit will now have access to a permit. And yes, there is a cost. I accept that. And because this is a trial, that cost may go up or down on review. And it may be down, 
that, that may well be an outcome. It may be that council needs to consider a way of even means testing that if it turns out that that becomes a problem. But the, the point is there is an inequity. If you live in a pre-76 home, and I do understand why it exists, you have an entitlement without parking to up to two spaces on the street. If you live in a post-76 with no parking, you have no entitlement. And so this represents a chance to uh, restore some equity to the system. Now, um, the other thing that I'd say is that um, we can end that discrimination um, for a cost. May I have a minute more, Lord Mayor? Members, I look to the floor. I have a consensus. I have a majority. Councillor Martin. Um, I, I have to say it seems prohibitive, but if, as the motion proposes, that it can be paid in instalment, it is less. And the cost is about $4 a day. That is about a cup of coffee. Now, that will then uh, uh, be, I think, a reasonable price um, for a trial. Now, uh, the other thing that I would like to say is that um, the motion asks the administration to report to us by July on the other inequity in the system, and that is that business which pays a higher rate in the dollar than residential rate payers has no entitlement whatever. Even when they have no parking, when they're in a pre-76 building without parking anywhere, they pay a higher rate, they have a less entitlement than a resident. And I think that's inequitable. This is a step in the direction of addressing that by asking the administration to have a look at how we might do that and to report back to us by July on what kind of eligibility criteria might be appropriate. Now, I acknowledge this is difficult. I understand that there are going to be concerns, but I think sitting on our hands and doing nothing, that is uh, advocating for the status quo uh, without any uh, plan for change or reform at any time in the future, is just going to bring more of the same. And more of the same is not working. It is not working in North Adelaide. I ask members to seriously consider this uh, and at least give it a go. It's a trial. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Now we've got Councillor Clarehand who seconded the alternate motion, followed by Councillor Aviard and then Councillor Moran. I'd like to move. Um, Reserving your right, right please. Reserving your right. I'll help you with that. Indeed. Now I've got Councillor Aviard. Yes, Councillor Moran. I am going to move, Lord Mayor, a deferral of this item um, to look at the premium parking permit and the quantum of streets that are going to be the 50% um, of the street, unlimited streets, the effect on that to the unlimited streets. Okay, so Councillor Moran, you are looking to defer the item in its yeah. entirety. Is that what you want to I do? I think so, yes. Look, if I could pick out... I just need a seconder before you start debating as to why, Councillor Moran. Workshop, so, yeah. So it's all workshop. You'd like to defer this entire matter to a workshop? Yes. With the view to bringing it back to Council when? But there are only two points that I want to discuss at the workshop. Sorry, Councillor, I just want to help you with your motion to defer. You'd like to defer this matter to a workshop with a view of bringing it back to Council. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, and, and okay. a next, next committee. Okay, yes. we'll capture the wording of that, please, as a proposed motion to defer, which really is an amendment. Councillor Mulaney, you've seconded. Okay, so Councillor Moran, you can now speak. Okay, I'll read you out. Uh, there are two problems. The premium um, a premium permit, which is just blows my mind, um, and the fact that we're only doing 50% of the um, unrestricted streets, which, as I think, as the speaker said, will force a lot of track cars into the bit we don't do. So I, I need the rationale there uh, for these two. Now, I'll read you out the um, message I sent to my colleagues. Uh, I do not support a premium parking permit at any cost. This allows the rich people to buy parking permits the lower income people can't afford. Imagine the headline, wealthy family with many off-street car parks buys an on-street car 
park permit while struggling mother of teenagers gets fined while her kids when her kids park in the street because she can't afford two thousand dollars. And I said, scrap this terrible idea. It will just feed into the snobby, untrue impression of North Adelaide. Um, we are basically selling. There's no criteria here. This is why I want to discuss it. We may have to put criteria. There may be very good reasons to have some that are um, that are sold on because of the 1997 rule that um, you couldn't get a parking permit if your house was built after that. Now, if we just limited a, a slight fee permit to those people, I could swallow it, but we're not. Um, these will be sold on. I can't see any reason why you wouldn't. They're not attached. But it is just the whole thing of selling something, They're in to, to selling a car park in the street. It's, it's very elitist. It's very, it, it just shouldn't do it. I can read the headline now. Uh, every person in the richest streets will buy one so that they can um, park in front of their house or their visitors can. They'll be snapped up like that. Hassan said maybe we could means test them. But we are going ahead with this if we don't defer it now. You can't, it's very difficult to take a parking permit away from somebody. So let's pause before the tsunami of terrible public opinion drops on us. The other thing I'd like to um, to have another look at is why we're not rolling it out on all unlimited streets in certain sectors so that the track, the part, the all day commuters aren't forced into the ones we're not touching. I need that to be looked at. The rest is fantastic. I mean, I really would have, when I moved this first, I did envisage that every person who was a resident or a business owner would get a residential sticker on their, on their windscreen. I still am not convinced by the figures. Um, they are taking taking the view that if everybody park all at once on the streets, there's not enough room. That's not how parking works. Park, park, people park in their properties sometimes, out of their properties. I, I would still put that up at the next election as something that I'd like to revisit. That said and done, I think the staff, the administration have done a fantastic job on this much more complex um, uh, model, um, and I think it can work. Um, but I think there are two things. We must not sell our public parking spaces to the wealthy, and we must find, work out what to do with the people that don't get permits because their houses were built after 1997. We've also got to work out what we do with the streets that we don't intend to restrict because they will get parked out like we're all parked out now. <laughs> okay, no, Councilman, 1976, I think, is that cut-off date, not 1997. Oh. Councillor Moran, can you please just look to your screen? Before I move to your seconder, who was Councillor Malani, can you just double confirm with me, please, that what you've got in red is precisely what you're looking to move as an amendment to defer? It is? Okay. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Now, members, you are debating an amendment to defer. Councillor Moran, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I support the deferral uh, for, for a couple of reasons. One is to, to review this premium parking option. I, I certainly concur with what Councillor Moran said. Two, for the 50% for the untimed parking and to assess that. My view, though, is from the other perspective of Councillor Moran to work out why we do need that much untimed parking. So I'm interested in, in having that sort of um, uh, d d discussion around that. The third is I'm just sort of st standing in the shoes of um, the deputy and uh, someone like that. If I'm in a post-1976 dwelling with two, maybe more people sharing, have one off-street park, I'm eligible for one permit, but all three of us walk to work every day and our cars stay on the street. That scenario doesn't work. And, and I want to workshop scenarios like that to make sure that we are actually making this a better service for, for all residents. So um, that's why I will support the, the workshop um, to discuss that. And I put that scenario as a hypothetical because for me, and I, and I, want, I don't want the answer now, but I think we need to, to look at some of those scenarios where I don't think everyone is going to win on this. So um, I, I support the workshop. Thank you. Okay, members, we've got, we're speaking to the amendment to defer, Councillor Wilkinson. Um, yes, I support the amendment because I think we should be looking at all of the community's parking spaces because doing half is just going to intensify 
you, you'll just see those half that space parked out at 7.01 or 6.59 in the morning by commuter parkers and that will make it worse for, for, for someone who lives in the area. My intention was that that all residents not get a specific permit park, residential permit park, but that the time value thing doesn't apply, as in Burnside Council says, uh, three hour parking limit, residents accepted. That's what I had in mind at, at, at no cost. That said, um, parking does have a value, and if people park on the street, if they choose to park on the street rather than parking on their own property, they're increasing the value of their property. And 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 that does have a value, and that ought to, ought to weigh into it. So that's why I think that this this uh, has some merit, this premium thing, so that people who are outside the criteria do have the opportunity. But I think it's worth us looking carefully how we do it. But um, people pay less rent because the place that they rent doesn't have a car park. They pay more for a property if it's got more parking. So it's factored into what people buy, buy or rent a property for. That said, there are probably landowners who are basically capitalising on the fact that council provides free parking on the street currently, and that situation may change. So I, I think it's worth having a workshop to review some of those factors. Okay, so members, can I remind you, you're speaking either for or against the motion to defer, which is an amendment to defer, so you're, spoke, you're speaking in favour of it. Councillor Martin, speaking regards to the amendment to defer. Yes, I am, Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, can I ask the administration why it was proposed that only 50% of untimed spaces be converted to time spaces? Uh, through the presiding member, that was feedback at a council workshop. Um, who um, feedback which suggested that if we did all, you know, tackled all the commuter parking one hit, it could potentially have unintended consequences for those residents um, who needed to be able to park on the street. And thank you. And that's uh, precisely the point that I was seeking to, ma to make. That is to say... Councillor, if you knew the answer, why did you ask the question? Uh, because I, I thought it was better coming from the administration. We have traversed this ground, Lord Mayor. Indeed. We have are, you, are you debating for or against the I'm, motion? I'm debating against it, Lord Mayor. Uh, we, we, we have paced every square metre of North Adelaide parking. I can't tell you how many workshops we've had. I, I think it's five. I'm not sure, but it'd be around five. We've had a public consultation that included a mailer to every resident and every business in North Adelaide. We had four public meetings after the mail out. I went to them all. We then had a couple of public meetings after the recommendations came out. I went to them all. We had separate meetings with the North Adelaide Residents Association, the North Adelaide Precinct Association. I spoke tonight to the North Adelaide Residents Association. They love it. I spoke to the North Adelaide Precinct Association and Councillor Wilkinson was there at their meeting last week. They are keen to get moving. What they don't want to see is yet another deferral. Can we not move forward instead of re-questioning every time a proposal is made? It is a trial that's being proposed and a trial by its nature means that it may work or it may fail. If it fails, it's adjusted. But to sit here constantly on our hands saying, oh, I'm not sure about this and I might have to fight this at the next election, it just makes us look like we can't make a decision. I can't imagine how you could research a subject better than this council has over the last three years. It has been a painstaking, tedious process and the administration, to their absolute credit, have found a way through all of the obstacles to give us the best possible chance of succeeding. And now people are saying, oh, not sure about this. Well, Lord Mayor, if we're not sure about it tonight, it's not going to be any clearer after another workshop, or one after that, or another motion. It's either do it or forget it. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Hender. Just really briefly, I'm also um, speaking uh, in support of the deferral. And just to take up Councillor Martin's point, which I, I think is a fair point, but this does raise a very significant issue, and it's a, it's a policy issue. Are we going to charge people um, uh, or buy a, 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 allow people to buy parking on the street for the first time ever? 
Um, and I think that just does deserve some proper consideration and some and some proper discussion. And I understand the administration have given it proper consideration, but I don't think we as councillors have been involved in that that bit of this this motion and I, and, I, and sorry that bit of this proposal. And I would like that opportunity. So I think we're deferring it just for a couple of weeks so that we can have the chance to have that discussion would be valuable for me. And I think it might also be valuable for us if we have to justify it, um, a, a better, a deeper, and better understanding. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Members, any further debate on the proposed amendments? That's what we're dealing with at the moment. Councillor Clarehan, you're debating the amendment? Yes. Um, look, Lord Mayor, I was happy to second the motion, but I'm also very happy to defer it because there are obviously issues that need to be reconciled. This is a major policy shift. We will be the first capital city in Australia that will be offering down the track um, permits for businesses. I think, you know, I'm not aware of any other capital cities? Yeah, Melbourne. Melbourne. Okay. So it is a major, well, Yarra is not the capital city CBD as such, is it? No. 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 So we, this is a major policy change and there will be lots of questions. And there is an issue around those people who are living in premises that don't have any car parking whatsoever. And they are, there are a lot of share houses in North Adelaide. One, because of the size of the houses, and two, because a lot of buildings were built after 76, such as blocks of flats, and they chose not to provide on-street parking to increase their return and the number of residents. So I am concerned that um, people will be disadvantaged and we need to iron that out. It will only be a week away, and if we can iron out some of those issues, and provide reassurance to many, I think we I'm very happy to do that. Okay, members, no further debate. I can't see any hands, so I'm going to hand you back to the mover of the amendment to defer Councillor Moran. Yes, thank you, members, for your support. It is a huge thing to do to sell off without any uh, criteria a street park to the wealthy. And I can assure you that um, it won't be the the people that you think it will go to, it'll be the people with a lot of off-street parks because they like to have their parks at the front of their street and their visitors too. Um, and we all we all know that's the case. So we we can't shut the barn door once that starts by selling all these. You have a line of North Adelaide residents queuing to buy these because they won't know whether they'll get a permit. They don't care. What they're, and so forth. So you just mustn't do it. And then you can't refund their money and say, oh, change your mind, I so many. Uh, we've heard uh, the problems of uh, people in, um, in Buxton Street. Um, then the solution is to give out more permits, give out more permits. But if we're selling permits, there's only a finite number of street parks. So that's taking it from the people who can least afford and most need an on-street park. North Adelaide's an unusual suburb of very large properties then going down to very tiny properties and a lot of, it's actually the most densely populated um, suburb in Australia. So there's lots of cars and there's very few car parks. We must not sell them. Um, I, I can't believe I even need to say that. We just cannot sell our car parks to the wealthy to the detriment of the people who need them and can't afford them. And if anybody thinks $1,500 is easy for a young family or a student, it's not. It's out of their realm. I don't know what price, if you get it too low, then everybody's going to buy one. But uh, I think the whole thing of um, selling permits is disgraceful and I think at least we should, if we're going to go ahead with it, we should at least have a, a workshop so we can explain it to people because I can't understand it now. The only explanation I can think of is the 1976 uh, rule that after that people were supposed to apply, uh, uh, supply car parking for their development so therefore they didn't get any street parks. So that's, that's a bit of a problem but I think we could soften that rule and give some permits to the, the um, post-1976 people when, it, when there's, they can prove need, as often people can. But do not sell off our streets to the rich. So members, you've got a motion to defer for you. I'll put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? So members, that is now carried. CEO, would just like to make a comment? Three, Lord Mayor, just to ensure that we capture where we're at um, and to make sure you're fully informed. 
What we will do then is next Tuesday, the 3rd of April, we will rejig the schedule so that we can focus on this particular issue. Um, in particular, we'll deal with premium permits and the 50% roads issue. So those two particular issues we'll pull out and focus on those specifically at the next workshop. So everyone understands that. So CO, this matter will come back to council promptly? Following that workshop. Okay, so members, this will be back to council in two weeks. Um, we now have a substantive motion as amended. So members, I need to put that back to you to re-vote. Councillor Martin, I can afford you any closing comments should you wish. Exhausted. Exhausted. So members, I put this before you as a... Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Members, I take you on to the next item, which is a report to note, which is 12.4, Transition to Carbon Neutrality, page 93 of your papers, members. Moved by Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin, are you moving as printed? Yes. Do I have a second, members? Councillor Hender, Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to this matter? Yeah, I do briefly, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, only to say that um, uh, this matter uh, requires further discussion on a couple of grounds. Um, not least uh, that according to the information provided, uh, our capacity to meet the zero carbon emissions target by 2020 is uh, seemingly in peril. Um, in fact, uh, all of the carbon emissions over which council has control, that is through property or assets it owns, have gone up uh, by 10%. And so we need to have uh, a discussion very quickly about that. But uh, may I also ask, uh, and I do believe it's crucial to this whole discussion of carbon neutrality, that the administration establish as soon as possible what it is that the new government thinks about carbon neutral Adelaide. It was a deal that was struck with the Weatherall government. The Weatherall government agreed to partner with the city and particularly in the costs associated with that. If it is not the view of the current government that we should continue with this target, then there is little point in our continuing to discuss it. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Now, Councillor Hender, you seconded the motion as printed. Do you wish to speak to that? Reserving the right, members, I look to you. Councillor Martin, uh, Councillor Slavi, you wish to speak to it? I might just ask a question um, in relation to the work that's been presented. How are we travelling? How is Melbourne going with this? Like how are we comparing with Melbourne? And has Melbourne decoupled, i.e., GDP up and carbon emissions down? See you. Michelle, thanks. Through the Lord Mayor, um, I can speak to um, the City of Melbourne um, in terms of what has been publicly um, published and their latest um, emissions inventory. So the City of Melbourne actually has um, a target currently to be carbon neutral for its community by 2020. Um, their, their policy, which was released in 2014, actually um, provides information that between 2008 and 2012, they had a 1 million uh, tonne increase in carbon emissions to about 5.99 million tonnes of carbon compared to we've got under a, uh, 1 million tonnes of carbon. Um, in their latest, so that's their strategic document, in their latest um, disclosure to the carbon uh, disclosure project, which is the International Platform for Cities. Uh, they may have calculated it differently because it doesn't provide back years, but they, uh, it indicates they've got 5.3 million tonnes of carbon, so significantly larger than ours, and they, uh, for all intents and purposes, anything we can see, they have not decoupled. Does that answer your question, Councillor Slammer? Thank you. Members, any further questions, queries or debate? Councillor Clarehan. Just a question, Lord Mayor. Um, I understand you were signatory to the Global Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy. Could you please remind us of that contract? Certainly. Uh, Councillors, in December 2015 at the Paris COP21, on your behalf, I signed the uh, Compact of Mayors as it was known then. And at that point in time, uh, there, I think that we were the 
43rd city, if my memory serves me correctly, Councillor Clarehan, that had signed that compact. There are now in the hundreds. We then, within six months, were fully compliant. And what that means practically is we are fully, fully compliant for the purposes of being audited. And we were fully compliant to understand within a period of about six months, which was a very short period of time. And that is a credit to the work that our team has already done in terms of measuring carbon output over years previous. So we were able to show that we could comply with the rigor associated with signing on to the compact, now called the Covenant. The state at the same time signed the Premier, former Premier, uh, Jay Weatherall, signed the Compact of States and Regions at the same time. So we were the first city uh, in Australia who concurrently signed with their state or their province, so to speak. Um, and I understand that was quite unusual, certainly on the Australian landscape. Um, so we are in a position where we can now regularly report our carbon output in our city and signing the covenant provided us with the rigour whereby we could do it. Michelle, does that answer the question adequately, I hope? Um, through the Lord Mayor, yes, more than adequately. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clarion. And the reduction in greenhouse gas emissions for the corporation is reported for the last financial year. Now, is that that's because we've changed the way we're measuring to fall into line with Sydney and Melbourne benchmarking, or for some other reason? Michelle. Um, through the Lord Mayor, so we've prepared inventories for the last two financial years, which you'll see before you. We've prepared those in accordance for the first time with the National Carbon Offset Standard, which is a standard that's put out by the Australian Government. So you can't claim to be carbon neutral in Australia unless you have complied with that standard. Um, so our accounts are are basically in accordance with that now. In the past, we've we have we have been reporting uh, invent on inventory since the late 1990s, uh, but that standard didn't come into place into 2010. So over time, standards and what you report on um, have become more comprehensive um, and more standardised globally as well. Thank you, Councillor Clearan. I don't see any further hands, so I'm going to go back to the mover, Councillor Martin. I'm done, Members, I put this item before you. Those in favour? Those against? Members, we carry item 12.4, which is a report to note. Members, item 12.5, Sir Donald Brabham Drive Tree Removal, Ellis Park, Tab Wadley, Park 24, page 100. Councillor Hender, you are? Happy to move as printed. Moving as printed. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Martin. Councillor Hedder, do you wish to speak to the matter? Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to the matter? Members, Councillor Wilkinson. Um, just interesting reading this report that the uh, the pines, are, the Lipo pines, are described as weed trees, yet some of the most magnificent trees in Adelaide's park lands that were around the zoo down near Frome Road, Long uh, Hackney Road, uh, magnificent Alipo pines. Uh, I think it's, um, it's unfortunate to be agreeing and being described as weed trees. And are we up for a monoculture of eucalypts and gum trees in, in our parklands? I think exotic trees have a place in our parklands. Um, these are perfectly healthy specimens. I would have thought we would have been able to um, plant our uh, avenue of, of gum trees. I know this is the gateway from the uh, from the airports, so it makes sense to have indigenous uh, native trees for international visitors coming into Adelaide. But um, I just sort of caution against this sort of uh, ethnic cleansing of of, uh, of, uh, of trees in the parklands. Thank you, Councillor. Members, do I have any further debate on this item before I move you back to the mover? I'm going to comment on this one too. I completely and utterly echo Councillor Wilkinson's views. I must say. I think that um, uh, European and other species absolutely have a place in our city. Members, I go back to the mover. Summed up. Summed up. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Thank you, members. Members, I take you on to Item 12.6, page 107 of your papers, you have a recommendation to support and note regarding park, car park management, Ronald Park. 
Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Moran. You are moving as printed, Councillor Clarehan. You are, Councillor Moran. Would you like to speak, speak to the matter? Only to say, Lord Mayor, this is a long time coming. I think many of us have been contacted over the years by members of the bowling club to say that they've had to take their life into their own hands to, act, to get across to Kettleville Terrace in order to be able to use the facilities at the Adelaide Bowling Club. Um, and this arrangement will provide um, parking, safe parking for those people who are actually using the bowling facility on a particular day. It's not all the time. I think it's a win-win for everyone. So I thank the administration for all the work that they've done in coming up with this solution. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Moran? Uh, yes. Um, I am only um, second this because it's a trial. I actually am not sure whether this is what we should be doing. Um, uh, the bowling club people aren't that old. They can, if they're bowling, they can carry their balls across the road. Um, as I said, I'm only, uh, I'm hoping the trial Trial, trial fails. Um, we did fight off a rear gun action adapter to have it on Saturday as well. I think the main concern is the playground and Arnie's kiosk. And so we really need to, this trial to once and for all find out whether that does affect adversely the, tr the people using the park lands um, in a much more pure fashion than a bowling club. Um, as I said, I've been to the bowling club. Uh, my children used to belong to it because they sold cheap lunches, cheap, cheap lunches and two dollar beers. So all my kids were members and they could certainly struggle across to Kettleville Terrace. Um, so I, I think the impression of you know 90 year olds that can't get very far, they can be dropped off. They don't need to park there. They're about my age and I can tell you what, my age can walk across a road. Thank you members. Uh, Councillor Clarehan, before I go back to you, because you're going to sum up, um, I will just make a comment there. That rear guard action on Apple came from myself. I believe that we are not doing nearly enough to support the uh, Adelaide Bowling Club, although I will accept this motion. Um, the, I think we've potentially got a OHS issue. I think that we have to be very mindful of that, and I think that what they're asking for was not unreasonable to have access on both Wednesdays and Saturdays. But given that it is a trial, in the spirit of a trial, Councillor Moran, we will do this for the, the upcoming season on Wednesdays only, should you elect to approve this motion. Councillor Clary. It's only to um, refer to the elderly residents who use the club, um, and because of my age, I turned 66 today, I'm forgetful oh. and, I, and I just can't remember the name of the resident contacts me on an annual basis to say, please, can you um, assist us elderly players on a Wednesday um, so we can continue our activity at the Adelaide Bowling Club? And I think this they will be very happy with this arrangement. And I can't, still can't remember the name. Well done, Councillor Perahan, and happy birthday. Thank you, Lord. Members, on that joyous note, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against, we carry that item. Members, I will keep the meeting moving. We go on to item 12.7, food inspection fee structure. You have a recommendation in your papers to endorse Councillor Wilkinson, hand, hand up first. You are doing what, Councillor Wilkinson? Moving is printed. You're seconded by Councillor Moran, hand, hand up second. Would you wish to speak to the matter? Just briefly. Um, the fees that we charge for these inspections are fairly small. I'm sure the cost of exceeding the fees is always as much. Just lift your microphone, uh, please, Councillor. Uh, that, that as we gain from the fees, and I think it's probably just perceived as sort of bureaucratic part by these people who are doing inspections. I think it's a, it's a, it's a sensible uh, recommendation. Councillor Moran, you seconded? I'm right. Members, I look to you. Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Milani. Just, just a quick question. Am I, have I understood that it's going like for eighty five fifty is what it's currently, and now it's going to one one eight? It's just because I couldn't work out. That's just... So, yeah, if we could please explain the fee structure. Yes, uh, it's true, the Lord Mayor. That's correct. So the current fee 
for, for initial inspections is $85.50. What we're proposing is that we would apply a new fee of $118, but only for non-compliant inspections. So people whose in food inspections are compliant wouldn't have to pay anything at all, where they currently pay $85.50. Thank you. And that's your question, Councillor Bellani. It does, dear Lem. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I just want to uh, say well done to administration. And I think this is great where we're actually uh, not charging people who are doing the right thing and actually um, making those that require follow up or um, are actually uh, needing a second inspection or even more than that, uh, a fee um, for the additional time. So uh, for all of our food traders, of which we have a sizable number, those that are doing the right thing are not penalised and, um, and it will bring everybody else in line, hopefully very quickly. So well done. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, members, any further debate? I go back to Councillor Wilkinson and move the motion. Oh, sorry, Councillor Clarehan, you no, no, vote, you're about to? I'm about to vote. Oh, you're about to vote. We're going back to Councillor Wilkins and sum up. As the DLM said, uh, giving uh, giving the free uh, thing for those doing the right thing and just charging additional fee for them doing the wrong thing is that's right. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Wilkins and members. I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry the item, which is item 12.7. Members, we're going to deal with item 12.8 next, but in the interest of being neighbourly, we have two gentlemen who have been very patient in our gallery. Deputy Lord Mayor, once we've dealt with item 12.8, could I encourage you to bring your motion on notice forward to deal with that item just singularly, and then I'll return to the agenda. But I, um, thank you. So, members, I'll take you now back to 12.8, Heritage Incentive Schemes, moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, are you moving as printed, actually? I am moving. So, Councillor Martin, seconded. Would you like to speak to this matter, Councillor I think this is a very worthy um, allocation, and uh, the, the uh, report is uh, outlines it very clearly. Um, I'm very happy to um, go over our, uh, uh, our usual 50,000 and support this. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Uh, Councillor Martin, you seconded. Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Look, thank you. Um, and I have a, a conflict of interest. I am, uh, by and large, an atheist. But nevertheless, um, uh, the architecture is uh, really important in this uh, project. Uh, it is in need of urgent attention. Councillor Wilkinson and I uh, visited the cathedral and uh, inspected the site and could see that the slate roof and the gutters were in dire need of attention and indeed the consequence of not affecting the work is that there could be damage to the interior of the cathedral. And the attempt at the seismic stabilisation is important also given that the church was damaged uh, superficially but substantially during the 1950s. But more than anything, this is a landmark of the city and of North Adelaide, and it should have our every uh, support. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yes, now having attended the, uh, uh, the meeting with the uh, people from St Peter's uh, Cathedral, and we learned about the, the uh, water ingress into the, into the building, Water getting into the building like that. That's a dire situation that needed urgent, urgent attention, which this grant is, is covering. And I'm um, pleased that um, we're doing this work, particularly in the light that we now have the northern aspect of the from it's the front end of O'Connor Street now, flooded, so all to enjoy. Um, so uh, it's good news around. You'll be able to see the work at night upon completion, Councillor Wilson. Yes. Uh, Councillor Perry. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I wasn't invited to the meeting. I don't know whether it was because I was a girl or couldn't understand it. I'm not quite sure. But I totally support this allocation. Um, every time we pass by St Peter's day and evening, there are people photographing it. It is one of the city's iconic structures that attracts many, many visitors from interstate and overseas. And uh, I think we almost have a sense of duty to support um, the restoration of this very fine, iconic Adelaide building. Thank you, Councillor. I don't see any further hands. So I'm going to take you back to the mover, Councillor Moran. Uh, 
Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. So, members, that's item 12.8. So, members, I'm temporarily going to depart from our agenda and take us to item 15.1, which is a motion on notice from our Deputy Lord Mayor regarding UNESCO City of Music, page 163 on your papers. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I'll take the motion as read and look for a seconder, Lord Mayor. Seconded by Councillor Clarehan, had hand up first. Um, thank you. Um, this is really to, to talk to our UNESCO status. So we were granted UNESCO status in 2015, and it is a, uh, a very great honour, um, and we need to do much more to celebrate this. Um, I note up there is, uh, I'm very short sighted by Cassie Troy and I can't see David Price, who are both um, a big part of uh, the music uh, push in our city. Um, so welcome and thank you for sitting through our agenda. Um, really, I, I'd also like to bring your attention to this article that's in the news that some of you have seen in, um, uh, on Sunday the 25th of February. Um, Enrico's not here tonight, but he's standing under cold chisel lane. Um, all around the world, uh, cities have acknowledged sort of their music heritage, um, and some of, some of those are fabulous, like, you know, sort of, John Lennon Drive and Paul McCartney Way and things like that. We've actually got rock pedigree in our state and music pedigree, not just rock and roll, but um, you know, we didn't quite build the city on rock and roll, but we've actually had some amazing uh, people that have worked in the music industry here. And it can have benefits on a social, cultural, and even in a tourism way if we actually are clever about how we go about it. So what I'm asking in this report is actually for administration to have a look, uh, a look at, in terms of our background, um, some laneways or areas that actually could possibly be known, and also that would benefit the businesses and, and the, uh, the areas that they're in, and then give an indicative cost and some planning around that. Um, I think it would be uh, a a wonderful thing to do and a lot of fun and you know it's the thing that what people want to photograph themselves by that lane one um, or, or that avenue. So thank you guys for your consideration. Thank you Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Clarehan, you second with the matter? Um, thank you Lord Mayor. Yes I think this fits in beautifully with our UNESCO City of Music um, um, membership and someone was only speaking to me yesterday about a visit elsewhere, overseas, and uh, they were talking about um, a, a mural road map where lots of tourists would actually follow um, a city map of murals around. And I'm thinking, well, in terms of council owning lots of laneways or being responsible, we perhaps might even consider the addition of the appropriate um, mural where people can not only find the particular laneway and sign, but perhaps a, an appropriate mural that further reinforces that. Um, we have a lower slang, so, and that was certainly a quirky addition. And Cleo Lane, so um, we're halfway there. Um, I think there's, uh, it would be a fun, quirky, reinforcing gesture that everyone would really enjoy. And I thank uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor for uh, placing the motion on those. Thank you, Councillor Clarehan. Any further debate, members? DLM, back to you. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Please do stay. No, obliga no obligation to leave. It's all excitement here in the Council Chamber. Um, the Members, we have dealt with item 12.9 on your agenda, so I'm now going to take you to the balance of items 12.10, 12.11, 12 12.12. We've got 12.10, which I'm going to encourage you to do in two parts, if I could please, members. The, we have got five draft motions for your voting delegate, which we will then determine after we have determined those five draft motions. So from page 152 onwards, you'll see motion one, two, three, four, and five. So members, we'll deal with those first and then we'll deal with the voting delegates who will then represent those motions. I think it's probably a reasonable way to deal with it. So members, could I please, I'm in your hands, um, I'd like us to deal with the five draft motions if you're happy with them and then seek a mover or what you'd like to do. So can I look to you please, members? 
I'm happy to move those five motions. Okay, so Councillor Clarehan, you're moving the five draft motions as printed. Okay, do I have a second to members? So, Councillor Martin, thank you. So members, do I have any debate on those five motions? There's six, sorry, Judy's whispering it to me. There is six draft motions, my mistake, Councillor Clarehan. So we have Councillor Clarehan moving the six motions, Councillor Martin seconding it. Do I have any debate about that, members? We don't, so would you like summing up, Councillor? Okay, so members, I'll put those before you. Those in favour, those against, and we carry. Now, members, this is to represent our council at the Australian Local Government Association meeting, and I would need a motion for a, um, uh, a voting member, and then I will look for a motion for a proxy voting member also. Uh, I'm, I can go, Councillor Clarehan, yes. So, yes. I could be your voting delegate or I could be your proxy. I really will happily work that out with whoever, if someone wants to be the voting delegate, they can. I'm happy to nominate you as our delegate. Okay, so members, uh, what we will look for is, I'll just take procedural advice, I'll do this correctly. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll seek a motion to, to select your voting delegate. Councillor Clarehan has nominated me. I accept as nominated should you vote me. Do we have any other voting delegates? We don't, so I need a motion to move that. Moved by Councillor Hender, seconded by Councillor Malani. And I'm going to have to hand the chair over to the Deputy Lord Mayor because I cannot preside over this matter. Uh, can we do the proxy at the same time? We can include the uh, proxy in the same motion. Because I'd like to nominate the Deputy Lord Mayor. Okay, so members, what we'll do before I depart the room, I'll just get the motion ready and then I'll hand over to the DLM. Uh, we now need a nomination from proxy. I'd like to nominate the Deputy Lord Mayor. Okay, Deputy Lord Mayor, do you accept as nominated? Am I still able to have endorsement from council to attend if I'm not a proxy? No. I don't. I'm going to take advice. See you. Yes. No, Councillor Clarehan. No. no, I don't think you can. So Councillor Clarehan, of course, has been our voting delegate for some years, members. That's been the custom of the matter, but I am in your in your hands. So Councillor Maloney has nominated the Deputy Lord Mayor. Deputy Lord Mayor, do you accept as nominated? Uh, I, I, I won't, Lord Mayor. Okay. Do I have any other further nominations, please? Um, I'll nominate Cal Councillor Clarehan. Okay, okay. Councillor Clarehan, do you accept as nominated as the proxy? You do. Do I have any further nominations? I don't, so your motion before you is as what it is. I hand you to our DLM. Have I Yes. Thank you, members. If I could have a mover and a seconder for both the uh, voting delegate and the proxy. Uh, move Councillor Hender, seconded uh, Councillor Wilkinson. Um, all in favour? Thank you. Sorry, not in favour. Not in favour. Those against? Because I think the whole of the government association is a giant waste of time. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Moran. <laughs> Thank you, members. Thank you, DLM. Members, I will take you on now, so 12.10 is dealt with, so I'll now take you on to item 12.11, which is progress of motions by elected members, page 157 to note. Councillor Hender, moving is printed, seconded by Councillor Slama. Any debate? No debate, I'll put this directly before you. Those in favour? 
those against, and we will carry item 12.11. Members, item 12.12. 12. Councillor Wilkinson. I'd like to declare a material conflict of interest because I'm nominated to go on the conference. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you for declaring your material conflict of interest. Now, members, item 1212 you have before you, which is Historic Houses Association of States of Australia, inaugural national conference. You have a recommendation before you to send Councillor Wilkinson to that conference. Um, moved by Councillor Clarehan as printed. Seconded by Councillor Moran. Any debate members? No, I'll put this directly to the vote. Those in favour? Councillor Moran, are you voting? Yes. Those against? We carry that item. If we can please invite Councillor Wilkinson back into the chamber, please, Ed. Welcome back, Councillor. Uh, members, emerging key risks, there are nil, which takes us on to item 13, which is questions on notice, of which we have no registered questions on notice, I understand, Judy. Questions without notice. Members, do I have any questions without notice? I don't. So I'll take you directly to item 15, which is motions on notice. We've already dealt with item 15.1. Thank you for your flexibility, Deputy Lord Mayor. But I'm going to hand back to you because item 15.2, Deputy Lord Mayor, motion on notice, reported to Council by subsidiaries and board members, page 164. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'll take the motion as read and seek a seconder. Seconded by Councillor Martin. The floor is yours, DLM. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I know that ACMA and um, the Rundle uh, Mall Management Authority do come and report to us, but what I was after is a, an opportunity for our other strategic partners uh, to be able to come and report to Council. Um, but more so, uh, most of the elected members sit on one board or other, and at the moment there's actually no mechanism for us to actually bring reports in and, and talk about the good work that the boards are doing and the organisations that we represent. Um, as a council representative on those boards uh, for the City of Adelaide. So this gives us a clear avenue to bring to the attention of other elected members um, some of that work that is happening, um, particularly um, when it's good news, but also um, other opportunities that may exist that we are uh, alerted to through our representation. Thank you, Neil. Councillor Martin, you seconded? Yeah, just very briefly, I thank the Deputy Lord Mayor for raising this proposal. I endorse it uh, and think it's a great idea that uh, those uh, boards and trusts on which uh, members of this council sit are uh, represented within council, or at least their activities are represented within council. And moreover, it gives us some longer term oversight of issues that may be affecting them or concerns. So uh, again, I thank you. I think it's a great idea. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Malani. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm happy to support this, but I guess one of the questions I have is there are going to be... Uh, it, it's an interesting scenario when uh, an elected member becomes a director of an entity um, where they represent council and under legislation it actually means that that elected member has an obligation um, to that entity. Um, not this organisation, not, not council. And I just wanted to flag that because I see, whilst I'm open for communication and um, information sharing, I do think it is up to that organisation to make that decision, how they come and report to this council. And, and I do uh, put caution to the elected member that is the, um, the director of NC, Adelaide Convention Bureau is one, um, uh, there are there will be some some lines where we have to be careful not to cross. I actually think it's the CEO of those organisations that should be reporting to this council. We fund them and they have KPIs to meet, and and that's how they report back to us. So I'm a little, little bit two minds about this. I just I might um, can I get some advice or or how we might. Um, achieve the same outcome but within the parameters that are... Well, two points I make is there, there is limitations to what an elected member who is a director of an entity can report 
It's actually not their job, it's the chair and the CEO of those organisations, in my view. And we have agreements, because we give funding to these organisations, or some of them, where they do report back to us on, on certain measures they're achieving. Can I get some response on that? You'd want some governance advice with regards to that matter, Councillor Maloney? See you. Uh, there's a, yes, there's a question around the, the processes that are already in place and the governance advice. I'll just ask Rudy to, to comment, thanks. Through the Lord Mayor, indeed, the motion as it reads is for a request for a report to be presented. It's then, of course, up to the Chair or the CEO or any other delegate to understand the boundaries of their fiduciary duties indeed, which is a valid point. That's why the admin comment also uh, refers to uh, the, to the extent where lawfully possible. So that's the, um, the boundary that the, the presenter will need to maintain. Um, we are asking for a report and they can then determine what they want to report on, which may be of interest to Council. So my suggestion is, Lord Mayor, looking at one, two and three, I think three is, point three is the problem. Um, and can I ask another question? Um, already in place, what mechanisms, CEO, are already in place where these um, entities have to report back to us based on funding agreements? They have, they have written, there are written agreements in place and how they report back to us? So we do have funding agreements with each of those entities and, and that is prescribed within the agreements. Do you want to just mention that, please? Three Lord Mayor. So each of the agreements would, it would be situational, we'd have to go back and look at each of the agreements to be sure exactly what the status is, but each of them do have a comment in relation to providing information and or formal reports back to Council as part of the deal. And would some of those have um, confidential reporting? Like, would there be t targets or KPIs that would be in place? That... I'd have to take that on those, Council, if I could look to the exact detail. There, would, there are some that I'm aware of that would have KPIs as part of their funding, but I'm not sure the confidentiality aspect. My, my, my suggestion is that Council invite, not request. That would be one thing to, to alleviate the, the, the challenge. And that we... Um, the, the, um, point three, I have a, a real question about in terms of... Well, I, I'm trying to get to a point where I, I think there's some holes here. So I'm all for reporting back, but I don't think point three... Councillor, I'll, I'll I'll oh, let me assist you with your choices. Your, your choices are you can vote yes or no, your choices are you can suggest a variation or you can move an amendment. So they are your choices on the floor. So the floor is still with you. Can I I'll suggest an amendment? Um, so the point two, I say council invite. Okay, so Council Maloney, you are looking, what, what are you looking to achieve? You're doing this, are you moving an amendment or are you moving a, I'm moving suggesting a, a variation? An amendment, yeah. You're moving an amendment? Yeah. Or a variation? It's an amendment? What's an amendment? How do I move a variation? You can suggest to the mover, that if it's not a substantial change, you can suggest to the mover in the motion a variation. If the mover and the seconder accept it, we then have a varied motion. It's up to you, it depends how substantive the changes you're looking to achieve. Well, I'll just do it as an amendment, that'll be easier. Okay, so you're moving an amendment. So if you... Um, so I think it should be council invite from the chairs and to, um, that's not quite the right um, order of the words, but I'll just for now say so council invite the, the, the chairs of our major sponsors to deliver we'll invite, then it's up to them. Okay, you need to be quite prescriptive on the wording, so it well, can be you, Let me... Yep. Yep, you've got that. Um, I, I, uh, I think delete three. And 
Because I think that potentially puts the elected member in a compromised position and well, the, the, uh, the first one's fine. Okay, so members, what you have before you now is an amended motion to debate. Do I have a seconder for the amendment? Councillor Andrews, a seconder. Councillor Mulaney, do you wish to speak any further to your amendment? No, I just think I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to achieve the outcome you're looking for within and, and protect the under legislation. There are certain things that we can do as directors of, of companies, and I also think that there are a lot of mechanisms mechanisms in place for two-way dialogue between council and all of these organisations. Okay, so I'm now going to go to Council Hender, then I'm going to go to the Deputy Lord Mayor who had had up previously. Deputy Lord Mayor, I presume you want to speak to the amendment? You do. Okay, Council Hender. Yes, look, I, I support the amendment. I totally support what, Councillor, what the Deputy Lord Mayor is trying to achieve, but that is that we get a line of sight to these organisations. But um, And some organisations are already doing it, and that's fantastic. Um, but I, I also have now that Councillor Milani has pointed out the um, paragraph three, I have a real concern with that. I think as one of the members of council who does sit on a board um, uh, uh, that has a chair and a CEO who come and regularly report here, I don't feel like it is also my job to regularly report here. I, I, in fact, I would feel compromised doing that. Uh, I feel that it would be inappropriate. There are representatives of that board who come and, and formally speak as part of their uh, funding agreement and part of the arrangements. And, and for me to come and also speak would feel would make me feel compromised. On the other hand, there are times when I'd love the opportunity to speak with the approval of my chair and my um, CEO. I'd love to be able to do that when I wanted to report good news. So if, if my concern about paragraph three is it feels mandatory. While it's mandatory, I don't feel that I can do that. I haven't got permission of my board to do that. Um, I'm not the board's representative. I, I, I don't think I can speak in that capacity. And I have to remember that while I'm a member of their board, that's their, my primary concern. Um, but if we could, if, there, if there's some compromise that might allow me to be given that opportunity at times, particularly when there's good news to share, or even perhaps when there's concerns to share confidentially, um, with with the permission of my chair and my um, CEO, uh, uh, general manager, then you know I, I can see there'd be some real benefit. But I would personally would feel compromised to be forced to do that annually. And I think the only thing I could possibly do is to bring the report that had been endorsed by my. Uh, CEO and uh, or general manager and chair, in which case I'd be adding nothing because they're coming on their own. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. Members, you are debating a amendment. I now take you to the Deputy Lord Mayor and then I'll take you to Councillor Moran. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm actually going to be voting against this. I did actually take legal advice before I put the motion through, so I did have a discussion. I draw your attention to 2.3 of the response from administration. Um, which is part of our standing orders in terms of our, 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 our ability and um, to, to report on the activities of the boards on which we are. I don't have line of sight to half of the things that uh, we represented. Um, and certainly the major ones in our subsidiaries, we do. And that's, I know that is taken care of and done very well. Uh, the rest of them, we don't. We don't have an opportunity to uh, talk about the activities that have been undertaken, good news, whatever. Um, what I could, uh, I foreshadow that um, in response to what Councillor Hender just uh, said in terms of making it mandatory, that what I could do is change on that very last line that it says annually or as deemed relevant, and then it's not mandatory reporting, but it's, it gives us the opportunity to bring information in as and when we feel that it is necessary. At the moment, we have no other mechanism. Member Deputy can I just ask you to focus on the merits of the amendment or the otherwise of the amendment. And and I've just foreshadowed. Yep. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Dealey. Okay, Councillor Moran. I'm happy to foreshadow those alterations to the original um, motion, as um, Deputy Lord Mayor probably can't do that. Um, I think by deleting part three, um, Councillor sort of said they agree with both, have completely neutered that um, motion. I've always thought, while we all accept the confidential part, having been on the motorsport board, um, that you can't bring confidential stuff back, there is just general information gathering. And I, I think councillors are very disappointed to hear the two that feel that they can't, haven't got, got the wherewithal, just pop up and have a chat about the market or whatever you're on, Natasha. Um, you are 
the board's representative, you're also a councillor. And that is why we put you on the boards. And I do not understand what you think you're doing there if you can't uh, occasionally fill us in on the non-confidential nature uh, items that come up. It's, I, I think there's little point having you on the boards then if that's the way you think. Okay, members, any further debate about the amendments? Councillor Milani, coming up on your amendment. Um, Lord Mayor, look, I think there's a misunderstanding here. I'm not talking about subsidiaries of this council. I'm not talking about Rundle Mall. I'm not talking about ACMA. Under the Corporations Act, Count Deputy Lord Mayor is a director of the Adelaide Convention Bureau. Under the Corporations Act, it says that her, her priority must always be to that organisation over her role as an elected member. She cannot, she cannot uh, choose to report back information that she chooses to report back to this council because this council asks. Her responsibility is to that entity as a director. So my, my point being that if we say that council, and I'm not talking about our own subsidiaries, I'm talking about those organisations where the elected members become a director of that entity under um, under the legislation. It is So I, I, I urge caution on this. Um, and I ask, I urge you to support the amendment because I'm, I understand what you're trying to achieve, but I don't agree with point three. So, members, you have a proposed amendment before you. We will vote on that. Those in favour of the amendment? Those against the amendment? Okay, so the amendment fails. It takes us back to the substantive motion which was moved by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Those that have only those that have not spoken to the substantive motion may now, may now speak. I look to the floor, Councillor Brown, you haven't spoken, you can. Could I foreshadow a variation um, along the lines that the Deputy Lord Mayor enunciated? You don't need to foreshadow, you can do it. I can do it, can I? Sorry, I'll move the should the Deputy Lord Mayor agree to it, of course, and yes. also should Councillor Martin as a seconder also agree to it. So we, we take out the word and in the last line and change it to, um, in, in paragraph three, to or. Okay, Deputy Lord Mayor, you're happy with that variation. Councillor Martin, are you happy with that variation? Yes, sir. You are. Members, are you generally happy with that variation? You are. Okay, so members, do I have any further debate on this matter? I, so Councillor Martin, you're finished? We have a motion, we have a substantive motion as varied. Councillor Wilkinson. I just have a question for administration in terms of the legal matters. Councillor Malani, I think perhaps we could have some response on that or if there is any, uh, in the event that there is some legal problem, how would that be dealt with subsequently? Is there some uh, okay, so you'd like some legal governance advice, um, CEO? Number three, Lord Mayor, we have already provided that advice in the commentary. Um, nothing further to add, Rudy? No. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Indeed, that's in uh, 2.3. Standing orders already deal with that, and there's a limitation to the extent um, lawfully possible. So, again, the, gate, the gatekeeper of that is the person presenting. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Members, I don't see any further hands, so I'm now going to take you back to the original mover of the substantive motion, which is Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, and I do understand the concerns. Um, I, uh, like Councillor Milani, have also done the company director's course, and I do believe that most of us are completely aware of our duties and responsibilities as directors of those boards. Um, certainly, I wouldn't be bringing anything into chamber that I hadn't actually talked to my, the CEO, the chair of the board first, but it does allow us to bring information in in a timely manner, particularly rather than an annual report that comes in. And uh, I hope other members will take that opportunity as well. Members, I put this item before you. Those in favour? Those against? We have carried item 15.2. Members, the last of our motions on notice this evening is Councillor Wilkinson, item 15.3, motion on notice regarding Her Majesty's Theatre Metropolitan Hotel, page 166. My um, mistake, there's another one after that. Um, Councillor Wilkinson. Sorry, Lord Mayor, um, yeah. I have a conflict of interest as I'm on the board of the Festival Centre Trust. Okay, that's a yes, thank you. Dear, and you're declaring what type of inf interest material? Material, thank you. <coughs> thank you for bringing that to the attention of your fellow members. 
Now, councillors, item 15.3. I move the motion in my name pertaining to Her Majesty's Theatre and the Metropolitan Hotel on the corner of Pitt Street and Great Street. Your moving is printed. Seconded by Councillor Moran. Now I'll go to you after Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Speaking Mayor. to the matter, Councillor Wilkinson. Yes. Um, we're putting a lot of effort into the uh, market to Riverbank um, laneway upgrade and uh, in the um, when we had our review sessions in the design room. One of the things I identified as one of the best opportunities for Pitt Street, which parts of the Pitt Street is the Pitts, that's one of the ugliest buildings in Adelaide parts, which hopefully we're hiding the trees. But the southern end of Pitt Street is flanked by um, the um, Metropolitan Hotel on the east and the red brick side wall of the uh, of the Her Majesty's Theatre. And uh, it was when I learned that the intention was just to repaint that rather than to bring it back to the red brick. Um, which is certainly what I'd indicated we should be looking to do, that, that precipitated this motion. And the thing is, we're trying to tie in with the red book character of the markets, doing a lot of effort in that space, we're restoring the market buildings themselves. Um, so we really want to reinforce that sort of red brick market character in the, in the precinct. And, um, and also, basically, if the wall is stripped back to red brick and floodlit, as I've suggested, it will look magnificent and it will be done once as opposed to if it's painted, then it becomes something you have to be recovered and painted every seven years. So that's why I've done that thing about looking at the cost of uh, the, the addition of cost. They're going to have to scaffold the whole thing to paint it. So if they're going to go to the scaffold, why not just go the extra length and, and use some of our funds from our uh, uh, Market River Bank thing to, uh, to make that happen. Um, and then with the uh, Her Majesty, uh, with the uh, Metropolitan Hotel on the other corner, the archival photographs show the full veranda that they had onto Grote Street. If, again, if we're putting effort into the public realm here to sort of make an approach to the owners uh, and the lessees of that, and potentially with something just more generous than we might, assist, assistance to make that happen would be would be a great thing for the precinct. So that's the, the thinking behind it. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Moran, followed by Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran. Uh, Councillor Martin. Uh, Lord Mayor, just to say that I support the motion uh, and uh, note that we are voting on an investigation into the proposals outlined by Councillor Wilkinson. I thank him for the motion. I can see his vision, uh, particularly for Her Majesty's in Pitt Street, uh, the site of that red brick wall lit up in an environment where there is a renovated central market with a similar facade uh, suggests that it would be very attractive. And the historical photos that he supplied in relation to the hotel and the now disappeared balcony uh, demonstrate just what a great building that was with the balcony intact. And I think it could, uh, it could look wonderful again, pending uh, the outcome of the investigation to determine whether indeed uh, either of the proposals are feasible. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, no further hands. So I'm going to Councillor Moran, you reserved your right. I'm not. Councillor Wilkinson? I'm not. Members before you. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried. Members, that takes us on to item 15.4. Yes, if we can bring our Deputy Lord Mayor back in, please, Ed. Deputy Lord Mayor, members are fourth and last motion on notice this evening. Council Moran, reception to welcome the South Australian Government, page 167. Move is printed. Seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, Lord Mayor, I'd like to uh, move an amendment. A variation, sorry, suggest a variation to the motion. Okay. Uh, it'd be difficult for you to move an amendment as the second of the substantive motion, but you can substantive. Okay. That would be easier. Thank you. So I'm going to accept a seconder as Councillor Hender. So we will let Councillor Moran speak to the matter first. Uh, yes, I was pretty straightforward. It's something we, we used to do uh, decades ago, um, before it became such a long, I suppose, parliamentary term, uh, um, 16 years. And I think it's a good idea to meet the new ministers. Most of us don't know them. Um, and it's also good to get our point of view in 
in early, we particularly, I'd particularly like to speak to the new planning minister um, about um, our powers in planning. We, we sent a detailed message off to Mr Rao, who isn't there anymore. So it'd be nice to get to, to, to face it. We had a, a rather torturous, um, sometimes, relationship with the previous government. And I hope this time that we can avoid that and get off on the right foot. I put this motion up before the election so it wouldn't be seen as uh, um, you know, favouring one or the other um, and would have moved the motion whoever won government. Um, so I'm pleased to uh, promote this for you and uh, I look forward to a pleasant relationship, getting to know know the new ministers and um, having a better working relationship with them than we've had in the past. Councillor Henry, you seconded the motion. Do you wish to speak to it? No, just to thank Councillor Moran for what I think is a splendid idea. You know, we should do it every after every election and everything we can do to build better relationships, state and city is uh, a good move, in my view. Well said, Councillor. Deputy Lord Mayor, I'll go to you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. It's just a slight variation. Um, that council arrange a reception uh, to welcome the new state government at a date of their choice with the purpose of fostering good relation. I'm happy to accept that variation if my second is. Thank you. Your second is Councillor Hender. You're happy to accept that variation. Members, I look to you for your comfort around that variation on the motion. We have it. Do I have any further debate about this, members? Councillor Moran, back to you. Some Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We've carried item 15.4. Members, item 16, motions without notice. Do I have any motions without notice, Members? Councillor Hender? I have one, Lord Mayor, which is coming up on the screen. Um, and, um, so I put that motion, which is there. Could you read that out to your fellow councillors, please, Councillor um, Hender? So the, my motion is that Council notes the condition of the new landscaping around the eastern portal structure of the Oban City Access Project appears to be in poor condition and requests a report from the administration on the landscaping associated with the Oban City Access Project that includes consideration of the following. The proposed Oban City Access Project landscape design, the current condition of the landscape works adjacent to the eastern portal structure, and a proposed approach ensure, which should be to ensure that landscaping is reviewed. Oh, sorry, ensuring that landscaping is reviewed to ensure that it screens and softens the eastern portal structure, including new fencing along the bus only road. Now, members, before we proceed with this matter, my role as your presiding member is to ensure that you have a fully informed debate. So that is the lens through which I will filter everything that you put up from the floor. But members, on this matter, you had design room sessions, you had presentations, I understand, in 2016 and possibly 2017 from members of DIPTI. So I will make a value judgment that you would be reasonably, if not well informed, about this matter, so I will allow this motion. So I look for a second. Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Hender, floor is yours. So thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I had an opportunity today, a reason today, to have a look at the um, Portal and Rymel Park and an opportunity to compare what we thought we were going to get with actually what we have got. Um, the, the landscaping work there has been completed, um, but it in no way matches um, the vision that was um, that, that we we were, I think, um, led to believe would appear. So what we anticipated, certainly what I anticipated, after those um, briefings and design room meetings and others, uh, and other um, drawings, was that um, the uh, the landscaping would be done in a way that would first of all shield um, and and hide the fencing, the, the safety fencing that, that appears around the portal, around the tunnel part of the portal. Um, and that the, that the landscaping will be done in a way that really enhanced the parklands in that area, um, particularly so that, for example, people who were um, playing in the playground or um, on the um, lake uh, would have a protected view so that they weren't looking necessarily at um, industrial fencing around a, a portal. That's not what has appeared. What's actually appeared, there's plenty of things planted there, um, but the landscape architect that I was with told me that most of it was ground cover. And so it, when it grows, it, it's all being planted as quite small plants, and I understand that might sometimes be the case, that we have to have um, small um, stock planted. Um, but even once it's grown to its full uh, extent, 
it will not in any way shield the um, fencing in that area. That's not what we thought we were going to get. It is actually something Councillor Clarahan told us to be watch out for to make sure that we get the, um, the landscaping that we thought we were going to get because it's happened with other projects, other transport projects where we haven't en ended up with the result that we wanted to get. So the point of this exercise is simply to get a report on, on what we have got versus what we thought we were going to get and most particularly to find a solution for it. The solution might be to go back to government and say, under our agreement you were supposed to do this and you haven't done it. I'm not sure that's the case. Or it might be to say, under our agreement you've done exactly what we agreed, but it's actually not great and we as custodians of the park lands need to step in and finish it. So I, I'm, I'm not particularly concerned what the outcome, what, what the methodology is, but what I am concerned about is that what we end up with is a beautifying bit of parklands where that necessary piece of the transport infrastructure is as shielded as possible by foliage and, and, plant, uh, and plants from the other users, from the, from, the, from the point of view of users of the parklands. We use this as an opportunity to beautify that section rather than be left with what looks like a dirty great road, a fenced road running through our park. Thank you, Councillor Hinder. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, yes, I uh, attended the inspection of the final uh, tunnel with uh, some of the other councillors and discussed about the landscaping and the trees and spe specifically. And um, I thank Councillor Hinder for this motion. Um, and what was discussed um, with me, with, with council staff, is that um, the government is sort of handing over sort of a thing that's within their remit. But after it gets handed over, council has the opportunity to look at the landscaping in the vicinity of that. And people who lived in the apartments on East Terrace look at, didn't want to be looking down onto a 20 metre wide expanse of bitumen. They wanted to be looking down onto tree cover and the like. And the trees are planted five, six, seven metres back away from the road. They will never hide the road. And there's the opportunity for council to plant large spreading trees, maybe a loop of pines, <laughs> but large spreading trees that will actually join and meet in the middle and actually hide hide that um, from, from view. And um, so I hope that this motion will open up the opportunity for us to look at really enhancing uh, thing. It's unfortunate the road actually goes up before it goes down, which means the tunnel I think could have been longer if it didn't rise up two feet above ground level to stop a potential flood. Um, it doesn't happen on the other road arm, but uh, anyway, that's been done so we can at least um, get some, look at getting some big trees in so, and in the first instance, uh, per the motion, look at getting the, the works completed per what was put to us in the first instance. Thank you, Councillor Hender. Members, before I hand you back to the mover, I may comment on this matter. Uh, Councillor Hendra, thank you. I commend you on this matter. I've taken an interest myself in the uh, finishes and so forth with regards to that project. But um, as I mentioned at the beginning, members, um, a, a fully informed debate. It was explained to us last year with regards to why there would not be trees overhanging that um, infrastructure, um, because that was deemed to be an OHS risk. So I do recall that specific discussion, but nonetheless, I still generally agree that there are improvements for the landscaping around the immediate area of the tunnel. Councillor Hender, back to you. Yes, well, Mayor, I also understand that trees might not be possible, although they'd be delightful, but it's not, it's not trees that I'm particularly asking for. It's, and that's not what our expectation was. What our expectation was was low, moving to high, so that the fence became invisible. It's, uh, it's not too tricky, we do it in our backyards um, and that's really what um, um, I think the outcome ought to be for that bit of parklands and um, I think there's a simple solution uh, and I think it's probably an inexpensive one, it's just a matter of trying, finding it. Members, I'm going to put this motion without notice before you. Those in favour? Those against? Motion without notice carried. Members, do I have any further motions? I don't, so I'm going to take you on members to item 17 of which we have two separate items to debate in confidence, which is item 18.1.1 and item 18.1.2. Can I please have a mover, please, for the delegation of authority matter, moved by the DLM, seconded by Councillor Martin. All those in favour? Those against? Councillor Corbell, Corbell Moore, you're voting in, in favour? Yes. 
Members, I'll take you to item 18.1.2, strategic property matter. Do I have a mover to move into confidence? Moved by Councillor Moran, seconded by Councillor Clarehan. All those in favour? Those against? So, thank you, members. If I could please ask those members, those persons who are not associated with these two matters, to kindly leave the gallery, and we thank you for your attendance.